Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG, I'm Sovereign and today I'm going to tell you if Lord of the Rings Return to Moria is worth your time based on my playtime of around 100 hours in this survival game. Most of which is fully recorded and posted in my Return to Moria gameplay series in all its NPC level glory. If it's something that interests you, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. And remember, if you do enjoy my content, do me a favour and throw up a like and let me know down below your thoughts on this dwarven open world survival crafting game. So let's talk about the gameplay. The core mechanics are fairly decent and much better in certain areas than others and with the gameplay loop you have gathering combat crafting boss unlock new armor weapons gather craft boss etc etc it's pretty standard tried and tested loop for a survival game with no issues it pretty much works every person's world is procedurally generated for the most part so each of the worlds created will be slightly different however the main areas like boss rooms and major parts of the storyline will be the same in the campaign and changes for the sandbox mode we'll go into way more detail on all the aspects as we go through the video while the combat is very basic something that i personally enjoy being absolutely shy at combat there are some pretty big issues when it comes to elevation and directionality for example, if you're fighting an orc on a set of stairs and you are below that orc, you will just swing through the target. Now, this doesn't always happen, but more often than not, it leads to frustration of having to run around it and getting on top or on the same level just to hit it. I had similar issues with the Great Hammer and Soul Mask. If an enemy was below you, it would just swing and miss. And the dwarf, unless locked onto a target, which doesn't always work, will have a soft lock depending on what's closest to you and just swing in that direction at random, even if you're facing somewhere else. This can get a little frustrating at times, but it's nothing to drop the game for. The dodge roll is pretty fluid and a blocking is a 360 degree skill and I do like the fact that the weapon shield durability drops while blocking, making it useful to have a shield with you most of the time so you don't wear out your main weapon too quickly. Different weapon types do more damage to different foes and less damage to others. For example, the war matic being blunt damage does way more damage to enemies in heavy armor and way less damage to animals for instance. Whereas the spear does way more damage to dragons and drakes and animals than the hammer does. While I'm not the biggest fan of gating certain areas to specific weapon types depending on the foes because I like certain play styles and I don't like to be forced into a weapon type I'm not interested in. But it's not the end of the world. Just trog through a lot of the areas using weapons that I enjoyed using even though it was doing almost no damage. So let's talk about the progression. The progression can feel a little weird at times, especially towards the end of the game where I felt like I went from 50 to 100 real quick. Compared to the slower progression at the start of the game, to put it into perspective, each episode of my gameplay lasted between 45 minutes to one hour and 15 minutes. It took seven episodes to clear the first floor and the amount of episodes progressively got shorter the further I got inside, with the last floor only taking two episodes of around one hour with no off-stream gameplay, unlocking quite a few forges and killing the final boss and crafting the endgame armor within a single episode. Almost half of the episodes were the, for the first map and then the rest of the episodes were for the other three. It really did feel great with no hand-holding at first, but it really did speed up around the mid to late game. However, the crafting progression did feel smooth throughout, but we'll talk more in depth about that next so let's talk about the crafting and base building the crafting i really like the aesthetics of the armor and weapons and their usability in combat is really quite well done and the amount of different levels of crafting progression is not overly saturated an example of this having fine leather as the top tier which really only requires 10 hide scraps to make hide, 3 hide to make leather, and 3 leather to make fine leather. This is also the same for cloth, etc. There are other materials required like resin and salt, but they do not overlap that much. Although unless you want to jump worlds for some resources, don't overcraft a lot of the materials as they do cross over into different tiers. You craft items called masterworks, which you can only carry one at a time, which kind of sucks. I wish the Tarox torch could be strapped to your bag as an accessory and still use one other, but I understand why they did it that way. It could be seen as quite overpowered and can make the game a lot easier but i think that should kind of be a like a choice of the player the base building is hit and miss for me anyone who's been following the channel for a long time knows i love building and survival games it's probably the biggest reason that i even play them and in this game the base building felt a little restrictive and less creative it's more like building lego than creatively building a base from your imagination you follow along a single axis with no way of trying to build any shapes other than something squared off, which it does keep in the style of the dwarves, which may have been a design choice in the beginning, but it would have been nice to be able to build in diagonals or some way of tricking the game into a circular design by overlapping floor pieces, for example. But that's not to say that I hated the building. I have a lot of fun with it. There's plenty of decorations, most of which are actually usable for buffs and the like, which makes it even better. There is a system in place that gives your bases structural integrity, needing to actually think about rafters, floor and ceiling placement, or you'll come back from an orc killing excursion to a massive hole in your roof, or sometimes your entire base is flattened depending on how you messed it up. Now let's get into the exploration. This is one of the biggest pros to Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. I loved and enjoyed every second of my exploration into such an iconic and lore-filled world. Finding lore scrolls, evidence of the fellowship 
making its way through Mario, Gandalf searching for Thrain, leaving wizard marks everywhere detailing what he was doing. The verticality of the maps and the A aesthetic was truly amazing. I loved every second of it. However, on the flip side, there were a lot of copy pasted buildings all over the place. Even though dwarves drink a hell of a lot, a pub every two feet was a little overboard in areas like Dwaradelf, but fitting in its own way, kind of like London. It could be really dark at times, and there are ways to get around this, placing torches everywhere you travel or using the mining helmet, Zarox torch to light the way, or just straight turn your gamma settings up. Even though I liked it, I can see it turning off a lot of people, with Erica saying on several occasions, how can you even play a game like that in darkness all the time? And with the current lighting issues the game had, which is currently being fixed, it makes it just a little bit harder. The replayability of the game is hit and miss. While the maps are procedurally generated, the campaign is still the campaign, and how to get to the different floors is still the same of each playthrough. This doesn't change, just how to get to those areas does. Some people will like this, others will not. I'm okay with there being some similarities, but is it to the level that you can play the game over and over again maybe not with the addition of sandbox mode though this was definitely a massive leap in the right direction for replayability and we will be doing a series on the sandbox since we just completed the campaign so look forward to that well at least i am with the sandbox comes a lot more freedom and lots of new armor and weapons to craft to kill stuff with and the fact that you can take your main character across all worlds with all of his unlocks can be a lot of fun too even jumping into a friend's Mario so you never really lose the progression of your character. You can even bring resources back and forth between worlds in your inventories, but only what's in your bag. The bosses for the most part are pretty cut and dry, nothing special with only a few bosses having mechanics at all, which doesn't make them that exciting to fight over and over. So let's go over the pros and cons. Pros, the exploration, the aesthetics, the basic combat. This one's just for me, probably not for everyone else. The fact that you can use a single character through everything you do in the game, the early game progression. They do the core mechanics right, even if they are basic, they are done well. And the campaign for a more chill experience and the sandbox for a more survival heavy experience is really nice to have. And with the cons, the basic combat has some issues. The end game progression was too fast. The darkness can be a con for some and i see a lot of complaints about it and even though i gathered enough gems to make a wall of torches it lit nothing up but again they have said they'll be fixing that very soon the building system lacked creative freedom being weapon locked to certain areas to certain enemies and bosses being pretty copy pasta throughout the campaign and there we have it my opinion and thoughts on the lord of the rings return to moria i'm still playing the game so it definitely ticks some boxes for me it but it could be much better in the future the game has actually been out for a year but with the resurgence of the steam release a little while back there is a lot of renewed interest and new players to the game i think the game is definitely worth your time as it was definitely worth mine and i had a lot of fun playing through and recording the series for you guys a link for that series and the playlist will be in the description and the pinned comment let me know down below if you agree disagree or anything in between i'd love to hear your opinions make sure to like and sub for all your survival gaming goodness fly safe and avoid local chat scams <laughs> I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up, it's time to look